Hey guys, I'm Heidi Preeb. Welcome back to my channel. Today we are talking about how to figure out where your boundaries lie and set them effectively. And I am of the very firm opinion that this cannot be done without being in touch with our bodies. Why can this not be done without getting in touch with our bodies? Because boundaries are personal moment to moment things that we need to be aware of as we move through relationships. The perfect set of boundaries for one relationship is a terrible set of boundaries for the relationship next to it. All people are completely different, coming from completely different places and backgrounds. The way that they interact with each other is totally different. And so it can feel like the Wild West trying to figure out where your boundaries are unless you learn to be in touch with yourself and figure out how to use moment-to-moment -moment self-awareness, which comes to you through a deep connection to your own body to inform which boundaries you need to set at which times in your relationships. So in this video, we are going to look at the bare basics of how to do that in order to improve the health of your relationships and allow you to stay maximally present and engaged with those relationships in every moment that you are interacting with them. All right, the first step in this process is not a simple one and it's not an easy one but it is a step that will start making your life better on so many levels, I cannot even begin to tell you how influential this will be. And that is simply learning to distinguish how different emotions show up in your body. I don't mean what you think about your different emotions. I don't mean the stories that you make up in your head and what emotions you feel about those. I mean, when you are in the present moment, actually interacting with the people who are literally physically in front of you, or when you are alone with yourself, getting very acquainted with what is happening in your body and what your body is trying to tell you moment to moment. So this is going to mean that for a long period of time, you're going to have to track your body states. And this is not something that you need to do with a ton of diligence, you don't need to stop every 10 minutes and write down how you're feeling. But what you're gonna wanna start doing is noticing when I feel totally present, engaged, alert, alive, like I am very happy to be where I am and I'm not in my head too much, what does it feel like in my body? And you can learn to just start doing a bit of a body scan in different emotional states. So when I'm energized, engaged, feeling open and warm towards people, what does it feel like in my chest? What does it feel like in my stomach? Do I tend to stand up more straight or do I tend to be more slouched? And does my heart tend to be beating faster or not quite as fast? How do my limbs feel? Am I shaking my legs or am I sitting still? All of these different things that your body may or may not be doing you want to start noticing and learning to associate them with certain states that you're in. When you are feeling sad and depressed and low, what does that feel like in your body? What do your arms feel like when you're feeling depressed? Are you taking deep breaths? Are you taking shallow breaths? How's your posture? And the point here is not to judge any particular body state. It's to get familiar with them. All body states and all emotions are important and they're communicating things to us. But a lot of the time, when we have not learned to be fully present within our own bodies, we tend to ignore the information our bodies are giving us and instead tell ourselves stories about the situations we're in and perhaps about the way we want those situations to go. And then we learn to self-regulate with those stories instead of showing up and being present with how we actually feel in the moment. So let's say I'm on a date and I really wanted the date to go well. And halfway through the date, I'm like, yeah, this date isn't going so well, right? I'm noticing for some reason that I can't put my finger on. I'm feeling kind of tense. My body's kind of clenching. I'm not taking particularly deep breaths. It's almost like my body is in some sort of a defensive posture. I might have no idea why, I might not have a single conscious thought about why my body is in that state, but it's something to note. It's something to be aware of. It doesn't necessarily mean that I need to be defensive towards my date. It could mean that my date reminds me of someone in the past who I needed to have that defensive guarded posture with. 
However, the important part is that I don't ignore the fact that my body is reacting in a certain way. If I don't want the date to go badly, and so I make up a story in my head about this person being completely different than they are, and start to self-regulate with that story, that is the beginning of a terrible limerent disaster where I'm now going to be trying to force this person to be more like the version of them I've invented inside of my head to escape the uncomfortable body sensation I'm experiencing in the moment. And that is going to get us further and further away as time goes on from an authentic real-time connection. And the reason I'm explaining all this is because I wanna be really clear that developing an awareness of what your body is doing at a given point in time in different interactions is not at this point about trying to change your body experience. It's just about learning the language of your body and becoming deeply familiar with it so that you are no longer constantly fighting it with your conscious mind. And later on in this video, we're gonna talk about why that is so important for learning to set boundaries. Step two in the process of using body awareness to set better boundaries for ourselves, and this is gonna be the most difficult one for a lot of people, is getting rid of the conscious mental justification game that most of us are constantly playing when we go to approach boundaries. When we are playing what I call the justification game inside of our close relationships, what we are trying to do is determine who is universally right and who is universally wrong. And then we are trying to base our decisions about which boundaries to set on what we believe to be an objective assessment of the situation based on principles that we believe are external to us. So if I tell myself there's a universal right and a universal wrong, and I will set boundaries around that which is universally wrong, and I will allow in any behavior from others that is generally considered to be universally right, then what I'm gonna end up with is a giant set of boundaries that does not apply very well to my specific situation, and I'm going to be miserable within them because I am not keeping out what is important for me to keep out in order for me to remain present, engaged, and alive inside of my relationship. And I might also be letting in a lot of stuff that I ought to be keeping out in order to keep myself present, engaged, and alive inside of my relationship. So right off the bat, I'm gonna give you an example of this one because it can be kind of difficult to wrap our heads around this concept. So there was a point where I was doing a training call for a radical honesty program. If you've been around this channel for a while, you know that I have used the philosophy of radical honesty to help me quite a bit in learning to get in touch with my body states and my emotions and learn to express them directly. And there was a radical honesty training call I was on one time where there was a member of the group who had been texting me to try to set up a call that we had agreed to set up and I had been ignoring this person's text messages. So we got on a call together and the trainer was like, does anyone have any conflicts or anything that's lingering for them before we get started that you want to clear and get out of the way with each other, which was a very common way to begin calls. And I was like, yeah, I feel really guilty that this guy, I'll call him Jim, uh, has been messaging me and I have not been messaging him back. I have been putting it off and I feel very like, oh, kind of guilty and distressed in my body. And the instructor went, it sounds like you're mad at Jim for texting you. And I was like, no, I'm, I'm not mad at Jim for texting me. He has every right to text me. I'm the one who's being the jerk here for not responding to him after I had agreed to have a call with him. And the instructor went, well, do you wanna have a call with him? And I had to check into my body state and my body was screaming, no, I do not. And I felt surprised as hell by that response because I thought in my conscious mind that I totally wanted to have a call with Jim. Jim was an awesome person, I really liked him, and yet my body was saying, no, I don't wanna have the call. And I realized I have been feeling super burnt out lately and I really, really hate online communication. And I know that about myself. Zoom calls are the death of me. So it does not matter how much I like someone or how much I wanna be in touch with them, Generally, I don't want to have a Zoom call. And the instructor went, try telling Jim that you resent him for texting you. And I was like, that's ridiculous. I don't resent Jim for texting me. I just feel bad that I haven't answered him. She was like, suspend your disbelief and try it. So I went, okay, Jim, I'm sorry for what I'm about to say. <laughs> I resent you for texting me. And I tried it a few more times until I really felt it in my body. I resent you for texting me. 
And I went, oh my God, that feels so true. And I realized in that moment, you can feel anger and resentment towards something that you believe in your conscious mind is perfectly reasonable, solely because it's not the thing that you want. So there was not a single cell in my body that thought that Jim had done a wrong thing for texting me. I quite liked Jim as a person. I had explicitly told him, I wanna meet up and have a call next week. But when I said that, it wasn't completely true. It wasn't something that resonated with the rest of my body. I wanted to want to have the call, but that's different than wanting to have it. And what I learned from that experience is that in order for me to stay healthy, engaged, and alive within my relationships, I have to learn things about myself, like what types of communication I don't like. Now, if I make a new friend who I predominantly interact with online, I make a point to tell them, I don't like doing Zoom calls. I also don't really like texting. I do not want to keep our relationship predominantly alive through virtual interactions. So if we wanna to get to know each other, I would like to prioritize doing that in person. If it's too difficult to do it in person, because let's say we live in different countries, unfortunately, no matter how much I like you, I'm not going to make it a priority to keep in touch with you because I just really hate virtual communication. And if the only way for me to stay connected with you is virtual, I'm going to start to resent you over the course of our relationship, even though I don't consciously think that that's fair. But the point here is that when we go against what we want because we believe that what we want is not justified or what we don't want is not justified, whether or not our conscious mind wants to do this, we will start to feel resentment for going against what we want. And it's gonna be very easy for us to project that resentment unconsciously onto the other person and start to feel annoyed by or resentful of them without understanding why. That resentment might show up as guilt and feelings of like clenching in our body when we see them and we know like, ooh, I haven't responded to their message. And that entire experience could be erased by us just telling them, here's what I don't want, even though it's fair for you to want it. And so I'm gonna set a boundary around the way I communicate, even though it would be perfectly reasonable for me to communicate a different way. And even if the majority of the world happens to communicate a different way. I don't, let's say, use text very often, and if it's really important to you for me to text you back very quickly, we might just not be the best friends for each other because there's a pretty big discrepancy in terms of what we want out of a friendship and what we do and don't like. So the whole point of this step eventually boils down to figuring out what you do and don't like and using that information to start informing which boundaries you need to set instead of trying to set a bunch of boundaries based on what you think you should and shouldn't do. The reason I do not recommend setting your boundaries around the things that you think you should and shouldn't do is because if you are showing up to a relationship out of obligation, when in reality you feel tense, resistant, perhaps unconsciously resentful of the fact that you are only showing up in certain ways because you feel obligated to, that is going to create mental resistance inside of the relationship that is going to cut you off from feeling present and engaged with that person in the moment that you are there. Now, there will always be things in relationships every now and then that we have to do for the greater good for example, I will happily text somebody to make a plan with them and figure out when we're gonna see each other next. And I don't feel any resentment when I'm doing that because to me, it's a necessary evil. So there will be necessary evils inside of our relationships, but a necessary evil does not feel like resistance, right? It feels maybe a little bit annoying, maybe like we have to change our energy a little bit for a minute at a time, but it does not feel like this kind of constant gnawing frustration because we are showing up inauthentically and doing things we don't want to do because we have formed our boundaries around what we think we should want and not want instead of what we authentically like and don't like. And so the final, but definitely not the simplest step in this process is bringing both of those skills together, the skills of moment-to-moment -moment body awareness and the skill of learning to set boundaries based on what we do and don't want as opposed to 
what we think is right or wrong, and using the combination of those skills to constantly set the boundaries that work for us within any given situation that we find ourselves in. And the cool thing about this is that when you learn to get really in tune with yourself, and really in tune with what your body is saying, you actually don't have to think that hard about your boundaries because you can very quickly, in a given moment, tune into the fact that you do or don't like what is happening. And based on whether you do or don't like it, you now have a decision to make about how you will respond. And that alleviates you of the responsibility of having to mentally construct this giant web of boundaries that half the time might not even really make you feel very good about your relationships. And the more that we learn to do this, to be aware of what isn't working for us and what we don't like in the moment, and then to communicate directly about what it is that we don't like, and either ask for resolution or set an immediate boundary around it, the less we have to ruminate and worry about what future interactions are gonna look like because we're gonna trust ourselves to stay present throughout them and respond appropriately based on the wisdom that our body is presenting us with in the moment that the things are happening. So I often see posts online that are something along the lines of like, what if I start dating someone and I really like them and then I find out that they're super insecurely attached. So we're a month in and I find out they're avoidant. And to me, that is such a mental question, right? It's coming from someone who seems to have lost touch with their body awareness. If we're staying aware, present, and regulated within our own bodies, we're gonna notice the moments in which there's a disconnect between us and our partners. We're gonna notice the moments that we feel like, ooh, I really want you to react differently than the way that you're reacting. If I'm telling you something personal, and you're making a joke in response or you're changing the subject, if I'm in my body, I'm gonna notice that doesn't feel good. That feels a little bit like a jab to me. And I don't want to feel jabbed. I don't like it, right? I just don't like it. So I'm going to maybe try asking this person, hey, would you mind not making a joke when I say something personal? I like to have these conversations more in earnest. And if they want to accommodate that, then that's great and you can work with that. And if they don't, then what are you gonna notice? Ooh, I didn't like it when they said that they wouldn't work with me on that. Or I didn't like it when I asked them to stop making a joke and then they made another joke in response. And so what do we do when we're continuously encountering a situation we don't like? We set a boundary. Maybe I don't talk to this person about personal things anymore. And that might be disappointing if this was someone who I was considering as a romantic partner and I'm now seeing that the things that are important to me within a romantic relationship are not things that they are willing to offer or able to offer. But instead of deciding that there is a universal right or wrong and this person is wrong for having those preferences or for having an attachment style that I wish they didn't have, I'm just gonna notice that I don't like it. Maybe their attachment style is perfect for someone else who also prefers to cope with difficult feelings through humor. But if I don't like it, it just means this person is not for me. And it's my job to protect myself and my own vulnerabilities through setting a boundary, even if that means picking someone else to try to be close with in that way. This work is not going to protect you from having to make difficult decisions, feel difficult emotions, and walk away from things that you may have once had a lot of hope about. But what this process will help you do is develop a set of boundaries that are authentic to who you are and the way that you want to show up in the world and have relationships. And it might not hurt to note that if you find there are a lot of things people do that you don't like, and there are a lot of times when people are unwilling to change their behavior when you ask them directly, you might want to just do some examining of what it is that you're expecting out of other people and if there are perhaps alternate ways of getting those needs met or if maybe the problem is that you're pursuing the same type of person over and over again who is unwilling or unable to meet you where you're at. But if that's the case, the worst possible way to go about trying to solve that scenario is trying to convince someone that they are wrong and the way that they're showing up in the world is wrong. Even if you're right, even if the person you're dating is like a serial killer, you're not gonna wanna waste your time trying to get them to change when what you could be doing is going, hey, I don't like serial killing. I'm gonna report this person to the police and go find a different boyfriend. 
This is obviously a very extreme example, but to a lesser degree, you see this happening all the time, right? People trying to change other people. Under this made up banner of universal right or wrong, it is right to text this much and wrong to text this much, or whatever it is in a relationship. Instead of just recognizing this person's preferences are not aligned with mine, and the way to set boundaries is to pay attention to what my body's telling me and use that information to understand what my preferences are and where I need to set boundaries to make sure that I can show up to my relationships without resentment, unexpressed anger, or resistance in as many situations as humanly possible. So this is not easy. It's a complicated, ongoing process that if you are taking it on in the most effective way possible, you are going to be finessing for the rest of your life because your body states are also going to change over the course of your life. You're going to get adapted to new ways of thinking, behaving, feeling, and that's an exciting thing. And there are many wonderful things that can happen in this process, including negotiating our boundaries, getting playful and inventive with them. But for now, we are going to leave it at the bare basics. As always, if you guys have any questions or comments or thoughts that are coming up for you as you go through this video, let me know in the comments what those are or have been. I love you all. I hope you're taking care of yourselves and each other, and I will see you back here again super soon.